I'm honored today to introduce our, our speaker. Uh, Naomi, uh, Naomi Dudley grew up uh, west of town here, so some of you probably know her, and uh, some of you may, uh, well, should get to know her better. Mm -hmm. uh, Naomi's married to Ed, and they have two children, uh, Scott and Kayla, and she has two grandchildren, Mason and Berkeley, and they are the light of her life, I know that. She lives in Plainview, and she's uh, worked for the Trinity Fellowship Christian Church for about 18 years. Naomi teaches. She's a, a minister of women's ministry and hospitality, and uh, she's a marriage and family counselor, and uh, she says that her passion is to help young, uh, to mentor, mentor young women and help them develop their Christian walk. She uh, enjoys teaching them to honor their husbands and how to be a good wife and mother. Uh, Naomi and I have been friends for a very long time. And in fact, in high school, we were BFFs. <laughs> so we didn't know what a BFF was. <laughs> we didn't have cool t-shirts and things like they do now. But anyway, as, as the years have gone by and uh, our friendship has developed, I began to realize that, that forever part of BFF is a very good thing. And Naomi's always been there as my BFF. Thank you, Melba. It's really special to be here today. Melba called me a few weeks ago and asked me if I would come, and I said, well, I thought I would be speaking to some, just maybe women, and she said, no, you'll be the morning speaker. So I immediately started getting a little bit nervous, but I'm so happy to be here today. I'm so blessed and honored that I, she asked me, and I see a lot of people here, or some people that I still know, and some people from, from high school, excuse me, and uh, some family members. I know that you enjoy WT and Pat, and he's my brother, and she's my precious sister-in-law, so I honor them today, too. And then Tom and uh, Linda and uh, Rowena, I'm just so glad to see you again. <clears throat> Would you bow your heads with me while I pray? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word with this audience. May the words that I speak honor you and bring encouragement to all who are here. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. How do you respond when you go through times of adversity or difficulty? I want to talk to you just a few minutes about standing firm in your faith when all things around you seem to be falling apart. In John 16 and 33, Jesus said, In this life you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Perhaps the three most common words that we hear among Christians in a time of crisis is, Lord, do something. Or maybe it's, Lord, do something. It's against our nature to just stand still and wait patiently for God to move. But God is never too late. He works according to his schedule and not ours. But when we go through times of adversity, our relationship with God will help us to hold on to his scriptures and his promises and to stand firm waiting for him to work things out. I want to share with you 10 scriptures well, really, it's 11 because I got another one right before I came over here today. Uh, if you want to take the scripture, uh, scriptures down, you can. And what uh, I'll just read them from my papers. But you might want to just take them down for, for your, uh, to refer to later. Hebrews 10 and 23 says, Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Isn't that, a good, isn't that a good thing to know? He can be trusted. Am I getting too much feedback here? Is it okay? <clears throat> Psalms 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man who meditates day and night. 
He is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever he does will prosper. Prayer and daily reading the word is vital to our spiritual life and to our spiritual growth. See, the strength that comes from God's word will nourish us and bring us joy and peace to our hearts in times of stress. Isaiah 26 and 3, He will keep in perfect peace all who trust you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. You must stay focused on the Lord, and he will comfort your hearts and my heart. This is especially a great, a great uh, scripture when we need peace. Isaiah 43 and 1. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through fire of a, the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In verse 5 it says, again, do not be afraid. This should encourage us to st stand steadfast when we are going through a difficult time in our lives. It's a great promise for all of us. Number five is Psalms 91 and 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The next one is my, is my favorite, and it's a familiar scripture to all of you, I'm sure. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Your paths. The word acknowledge here means to recognize his authority. To confess his existence and his power. We need the wisdom of God. Always. Every day. We need it for direction. We should make the next scripture a declaration in our heart. It's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Scriptures like that ignite our faith. And it, it encourages us to remain strong. And it takes the pressure off of ourselves. I can do all things through Christ. Through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8.31. One says, if God be for me, who or what can be against me? That scripture is like a letter of confidence addressed to you and me. If God is for us. Who can be against us? What does it matter what anyone says or thinks? In Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You are never alone. That's an amazing thought that we're never alone, regardless of what we're going through. The next one is Psalms 37, 23. The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of our life. Have you ever thought about that? He delights in every detail. Though they stumble, they will not fall. For the Lord holds them by his hand. God is so totally aware of everything we're going through. It's nothing is a surprise to him. He's known it since the beginning of time that we would have these situations happen in our life. The 11th one that I just, uh, before I left the house today, I felt impressed to write this one down, is Psalms 18, 1 and 2, where David says, I love you, Lord. You are my strength, my rock, my fortress, in whom I find protection. You are my shield, the strength of my salvation. 
and my stronghold. We went over that scripture in Pat's Sunday school class this morning. I sat there and just kind of giggled, okay? You want them to know this. You want me to know this. I want uh, to talk to you about a couple of examples of people in the Bible who lived a grounded life. We talked about being grounded this morning also in our class. Habakkuk, uh, in, in the book of Habakkuk, was very troubled about many aspects of his life, his personal life and otherwise. But Habakkuk always brought his concerns to the Lord. In Habakkuk 3.17, this was his prayer when he was telling God of his dilemma. And he had some dilemmas, as, you, as I'll read this to you. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, <clears throat> even though the flocks die in the fields, the cattle barns are empty. This was Habakkuk's cry to the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. What will happen then? Then he will make me as sure-footed as a deer and bring me safely over the mountains. As you think about <coughs> pardon me, a deer, uh, how its feet are made, when it runs out the mountain or scampers where it does, it is very confident because that's, he's steadfast and he, he knows his terrain. But that's the way God wants us to be, that he wants us to be steadfast and confident in him, that he, we're, he's going to take us over our trials and tribulations, our times of mountains of despair. Habakkuk knew that God was in control. And he rejoiced in the God of his salvation. And he, tr and he trusted God, even though he was discouraged in, in what was going on in his life, he still trusted the Lord. His example is one that should encourage us to move from doubt to faith. So many times we uh, don't know what to do, but if we just stay focused on the Lord, he will help us. This being Laity Sunday, I wanted to tell you about a modern-day Habakkuk that's in our church. I'm speaking of Ray and Judy Maka. I have permission to share this story with you. Ray and Judy have been uh, lay leaders for our, in our church about 14 years. Uh, they've also been faithful to serve the Lord in, in many capacities. And they, but the last year and a half or maybe two years, they've gone through a lot of struggles. And as I was thinking about their all the things that they've gone through. I just, um, Ray is a, a rancher and a farmer. I thought about how Ray might have prayed this prayer, the prayer of Habakkuk. Lord, we have been in a drought for a long time. And we really, really need rain. Our crops have failed because they've all dried up. I've had to sell my cattle because of the grassland has died. And oh, did I mention that my wife Judy has just been recently di diagnosed with breast cancer. But we have witnessed their lives and Ray and Judy's response to their time was in their troubles. Yet, we will teach a life group, a Bible study. We will stay faithful to you, Lord, we are going to continue to be leaders. Ray says, I'll continue to be an usher, a head usher. One day at work, I, Ray came in. He brings little chocolates to the staff, especially dear to my heart. I heard Ray say, I will mow the church lawn anytime you need it since I have a little more time. What a servant's heart. Judy has been a faithful member of our women's ministry team for a long, long time. Judy is a great cook, and she will offer to make food for any occasion, so we call on her a lot. The list goes on of the things that they do for our church. Judy told me she felt God's presence, even in their time of struggles. When Judy was diagnosed with breast cancer, she felt a blow just like any of us would. She was praying, Lord, on top of everything else, I don't know if I can do this. 
And the Lord's reply to her, she felt in her heart, he said, I know, but we can. Well, Judy has since recovered. She's had surgeries, and she has recovered and is doing very well. But because of their faithfulness to serve in our church and also in the, in the Emmaus community, they've been such great examples of uh, all who know them. They have truly been witnesses of what it means to love and trust the Lord, even in their dark time. I so respect them. As far as this church goes, I don't know you all may be very active in this church, but I encourage you to be proactive here at First Methodist Church. Get involved. Um, there is somewhere you can serve. And if you don't know what to do or ask the leadership to say, I, I would like to do something in this church, you tell me where I can best serve. I promise you they will find a place for you. We all need to be ministers where we are needed. You need this church, and this church needs you. The circumstances of Ray and Judy and Habakkuk in the Bible that I was talking about in their struggles are just raw realities of life. Those can even cause us to question our faith at times. We are only human. But you see, God will give his followers strength and confidence in their time of difficulty. We must resolve in our heart that we will rejoice and we will praise him. Even though we may not understand the process or what the answer is or when it will come. Habakkuk saw his own limitations in contrast to God's answer and his unlimited power and control of the, all the world's events. There is hope beyond our circumstances. We must cling tightly to our faith. God's grace will sustain us through all the tough times. Another example is in 2 Chronicles 20, when King Jehoshaphat, and his, his, he had a very small army. He was faced with the Ammonites, who was a very huge army. Well, they were very scared. Jehoshaphat that and his people were very fearful. Jehoshaphat buried his face. He fell to the ground and says, We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's what you do in a time of fear or in time of trouble. It takes the pressure off of us, and it puts it on God who knows the answers. The message came back from the Lord. He said, do not be afraid or discouraged. I believe this is for some people here today. Go out tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. The battle is not yours, but it's mine. They began to worship the Lord. Jehoshaphat said, listen to me, you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. There's that phrase again, stand firm. The moment they began to sing and praise the Lord, he caused the, Ammon, the army of Ammon to turn upon, against themselves and begin to fight. I'll tell you what happens in a minute. Okay, in their time of trouble, I want to do a quick review. What did they do in our time of trouble? What do we need to do? They cried out for help. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We need to let that sink in. We can share that with a friend. When we don't know what to do, we need to focus upon the Lord. Number two, know that the Lord is with you. Remember, the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. Sometimes we need to admit that and just say, I give up. The battle is not mine. I'm tired of worrying about it. I'm trying, tired of being afraid. I'm tired of having to lay awake at night worried about this. The battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. 
stand firm. They refused to let doubt or let fear grip their hearts. There was a, they had a, uh, a, they had a resolve and a determination that caused them to stand firm, to stay steadfast on solid ground without wavering. They began to sing and worship the Lord. Their attention was diverted from their troubles to the one who could handle their troubles. God did fight their battle, and they gave him praise and glory. It took three days for Jeho Jehoshaphat's army to gather in all the, the valuables, the money, the jewels, but they, it's more than they could even carry out. Isn't that a cool way to end a, a battle? You get all the stuff. They were full of joy that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. Things may be going just great in your lives, and I hope they, that everything is great. But there are people suffering all around us, whether it's in their health, something about their family, whether they've lost a job, it's their finances, or just any hardship. I personally am going through a stressful time in my life. But I know, experientially, that God is in control. He is my source for all I need. And, and I trust him with everything that's going on. Sometimes I have to remind myself where I am in, in him and stay firm, stay steadfast, and not waver. See, number one, God is beyond our comprehension, and we may not understand why he allows different instances to come in our life, times of suffering or pain. I want you to remember this, but it is our part to remain faithful. We, have, we need to stay faithful.